Hey everyone, welcome back. Today in this video, we have this engine with cooling system issues. As soon as I start the engine, cooling fan start working at high speed and I have high fuel consumption as well. So for diagnosing this car, today I'm gonna use this scanner, which is Mucar 892BT. And we're gonna use the AI feature, which is added to this scanner. So we're gonna try the AI feature on this scanner today to see how we can rely on that to diagnose and test this car with cooling system problem. Before starting the video, if you guys haven't subscribed the channel yet, please don't forget to subscribe. If you are interested to learn more, you can find the link to our online courses in the video description as well. First of all, about this scanner, as I said, is a Mucar 892BT. This scanner comes with a touch screen tablet with nice grips on the side. If you look at the back, you have the dongle right here, which is seated on the tablet with magnet. So as you see, the magnet is gonna hold the dongle right here. So there is no way that you lose the dongle. So this is the model 892BT. If you're interested to learn more about this scanner, you can check the link in the description or the first comment down below. Link is provided and the discount code is provided right there as well. This scanner covers all the systems and many special functions that you see right here. I try to test these special functions on the next upcoming videos. But one of the most amazing features that I'm gonna try today is the AI feature on this scanner. Many times when we have some false codes on the engine, we're gonna go for searching some diagnostic procedure. Today, we're gonna see how we can use the AI feature on this scanner to diagnose and fix this car. In addition to all these features, this scanner provides lifetime free update for you. It means you don't need to pay for any subscription or any updates ever again. Many scan tools out there, they provide only one or two years free update. And after that, you have to pay for annual subscription. But this scanner provides lifetime free update and you don't have to pay anything for it. Let's start. I'm going to connect the scanner to read the fault codes. And then we're going to use the AI feature to go step by step for diagnosing the car. I'm gonna connect the dongle to the OBD2 connector to read the fault codes. On the device itself, I'm gonna go for the auto search because it's really important for us if a scan tool can detect the car automatically. So we don't need to select the car step by step. And sometimes when you select the car manually, you may select the car incorrectly, which is gonna cause some issues. So a scanner is scanning the car for detecting the VIN number. Yeah, it's a Kia. So we have the VIN number right now. 16 pin we go for auto search so as you see scan tool already detected every single detail of this car you have different options here for health report which a scan tool is going to cover all the systems on the car system selection will go for selecting the systems individually one by one all the systems which might be installed on this car and a special functions and read password. I'm gonna go for the health report right now because I'm going to see if a scan tool is covering all the systems. As you see, it's reading the fault codes, engine, transmission, we already have some fault codes on the engine, ABS, SRS, air conditioning system. So all these systems are detected by the scanner, engine, ABS airbag of course all these red ones are the fault codes that we have transmission body control module electric power steering immobilizer and transmitter cost saving they are all detected by this scanner on the engine as you see we have four fault codes which are p0118 engine coolant temperature sensor circuit high this is exactly what we are after which is present we have some other fault codes as history and pending. So I'm gonna go for the engine itself. So this is the code that we want. We're gonna search this code on the AI functions on the scanner to see how it can help us. But I'm gonna try erasing the codes right now. And then if we get back in here, as you see, the other codes are already gone. The only code that we have is P0118. On the AI function, enter, and I'm gonna search how to fix P0118. On a Kia Rio, 
and let's see what AI tells us about this. I'm just waiting for the AI to respond properly. It's going to provide all the details for you right now. So this is what AI is telling us. We have the common causes for this fault code, which could be faulty ECT sensor, damaged wiring or connectors, low coolant level or cooling system issues, and ECM issues, which is referring at rare, which is commonly rare. We may have ECM issues, but they are not really common. This is exactly what AI is telling us. So we need to focus on the sensor and wiring and connector itself. The tools that you need are listed in here. The scanner that we have right now, multimeter for checking the sensor and wiring, wrench for taking the sensor out, and we might need the coolant in some cases, not today. And right here, if we go for diagnostic procedure that AI is asking us to do is first and second steps are some general diagnostic procedure for checking the car to see if there's any other fault code that can give us some ideas about the nature of the fault because some fault codes are related to each other and to check the car for any symptoms like poor fuel economy overheating and engine running rough these are all related to the cooling system failure as well and of course we check for the coolant level for any leak at the beginning of any diagnostic that we do on the cooling system but starting from here we're going to go step by step to locate the components and see what ai is telling us to do on the car to find the issue so we are right here next to the engine compartment and the next step is to locate the ect sensor which is located next to the thermostat housing this kind of instruction is really helpful for those friends who are doing the DIY repair. So right here on the engine, we have the coolant temperature sensor located right there. So inspect the wiring and connector for ECT sensor. Look for any damage, corroded or loose wiring. So I'm going to disconnect the connector first. So here is the connector of ECT sensor. So the first thing is to make sure if the connector itself is good. We want to make sure there is no corrosion or moisture on the connector itself. It looks okay. What we have next here on the instruction is to use a multimeter to test the resistance of the sensor. We're going to go one step further right now that we are doing the diagnostic on the car to check the wiring as described in here. Check the voltage. Use a multimeter to check the voltage at ECT sensor connector. With the ignition on, you should see around 5 volts on the signal wire. So this is what AI is telling us. On the sensor connector itself, we have two wires, of course. Let's have a look at the wiring diagram for this car. As you see, these two wires are identified as pin number 1, green wire, which is the sensor ground, and pin number 3, because pin number 2 is empty. You see pin number 2 at the middle is empty. Pin number 3 is a pink wire and that one is the signal so it means based on what ai is telling us on this pink wire right now that ignition switch is on i should have five volts so my multimeter is just right here on voltage so i put the negative prop on the body ground and right here on the sensor connector on this pink wire on the signal i'm gonna check the voltage so as you see we are getting five volts as instruction tells us so this value shows that this wire is connected directly to the ecm with no issue so right now engine is running we check the wiring let's have a look at the live data for coolant temperature sensor water temperature voltage water temperature okay so right now as you see the value that we are getting from the sensor is 123 degrees fahrenheit we can change it to centigrade as well it's already fixed on 51 is not changing at all and the 
voltage that we are getting from the sensor is constantly showing at 5 volts so this fixed 5 volts on the sensor signal shows that there is open circuit this is exactly what measured on the sensor when sensor connector was disconnected right now that engine is running and sensor connector is connected this value should be changing but as you see temperature is not changing the voltage is not changing at all that's why the cooling fan is running at high speed as well because engine cannot monitor the temperature of the engine properly for the safety reason it's going to activate the cooling fan at high speed to make sure that engine doesn't overheat so we already checked the wiring if you look at the sensor pins i'm not sure if you can see it right now or not but that pin as you see is a little bent to the left side so that's a signal pin which maybe can cause bad connection between the sensor and the pin itself because you remember on the live data the sensor is not responding that 5 volts constant supply that we are getting from the sensor means there is no connection between the sensor output and the signal wire on the sensor we can't take the sensor out but i'm going to do something right now to try to straighten the signal pin on the sensor then i will connect the connector again and check the live data all right guys as you see i straightened that pin on the sensor itself and connected the connector and right now as you see the voltage is back to normal sensor is measuring proper voltage right now if i go back to read the fault code so you see it's pending it's not present anymore and if i try to erase it fault code is gone i noticed the issue on the sensor pin because when i try to connect the connector back on the sensor i noticed that the connector didn't click because i was expecting the connector to sit properly and to click to make sure that the connector is seated properly but there was no click sound i took the connector out i thought maybe it's a connector issue but after looking into the sensor pin i noticed that the sensor pin was bent a little that could happen if someone tries to force the connector into the sensor in awkward position so wiring was good sensor itself was good the issue was just one bent pin so whatever this scan tool did for us today was really helpful for diagnosing and testing the car the ai function from my point of view was very helpful as well instead of searching on a google and getting different sort of results you can have everything right here for, for performing the diagnostic and doing diy test as well i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you are interested to learn more you can find the link for our online courses in the video description thank you very much for watching